Chapter 11, Part 1 of Volume 2 of Airplane Flying Handbook, FAA-8-8083-3A. Dash 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 this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Dorr. Airplane Flying Handbook by the FAA. Transition to Complex Airplanes. High Performance and Complex Airplanes Transition to a complex airplane or a high-performance airplane can be demanding for most pilots without previous experience. Increased performance and increased complexity both require additional planning, judgment, and piloting skills. Transition to these types of airplanes, therefore, should be accomplished in a systematic manner through a structured course of training administered by a qualified flight instructor. A complex airplane is defined as an airplane equipped with a retractable landing gear, wing flaps, and a controllable pitch propeller. For a seaplane to be considered complex, it is required to have wing flaps and a controllable pitch propeller. A high-performance airplane is defined as an airplane with an engine of more than 200 horsepower. Wing Flaps Airplanes can be designed to fly fast or slow. High speed requires thin, moderately cambered airfoils with a small wing area, whereas the high lift needed for low speeds is obtained with thicker, highly cambered airfoils with a larger wing area. See figure 11-1. Many attempts have been made to compromise this conflicting requirement of high cruise and slow landing speeds. Since an airfoil cannot have two different cambers at the same time, one of two things must be done. Either the airfoil can be a compromise, or a cruise airfoil can be combined with a device for increasing the camber of the airfoil for low-speed flight. One method for varying an airfoil's camber is the addition of trailing-edge flaps. Engineers call these devices a high-lift system. Function of Flaps Flaps work primarily by changing the camber of the airfoil since deflection adds aft camber. Flap deflection does not increase the critical stall angle of attack, and in some cases flap deflection actually decreases the critical angle of attack. Deflection of trailing edge control surfaces, such as the aileron, alters both lift and drag. With aileron deflection, there is asymmetrical lift, rolling moment, and drag, adverse yaw. Wing flaps differ in that deflection acts symmetrically on the airplane. There is no roll or yaw effect, and pitch changes depend on the airplane design. Pitch behavior depends on flap type, wing position, and horizontal tail location. The increased camber from flap deflection produces lift primarily on the rear portion of the wing. This produces a nose-down pitching moment, However, the change in tail load from the downwash deflected by the flaps over the horizontal tail has a significant influence on the pitching moment. Consequently, pitch behavior depends on the design features of the particular airplane. Flap deflection of up to 15 degrees primarily produces lift with minimal drag. The tendency to balloon up with initial flap deflection is because of lift increase but the nose-down pitching moment tends to offset the balloon. Deflection beyond 15% produces a large increase in drag. Drag from flap deflection is parasite drag, and as such is proportional to the square of the speed. Also, deflection beyond 15 degrees produces a significant nose-up pitching moment in most high-wing airplanes because the resulting downwash increases the airflow over the horizontal tail. Flap Effectiveness Flap effectiveness depends on a number of factors, but the most noticeable are size and type. For the purpose of this chapter, trailing edge flaps are classified as four basic types. Plain, hinge, split, slotted, and fowler. See figure 11-2. The plane, or hinge flap, is a hinged section of the wing. The structure and function are comparable to the other control surfaces, ailerons, rudder, and elevator. The split flap is more complex, 
it is the lower or underside portion of the wing. Deflection of the flap leaves the trailing edge of the wing undisturbed. It is, however, more effective than the hinge flap because of the greater lift and less pitching moment, but there is more drag. Split flaps are more useful for landing, but the partially deflected hinge flaps have the advantage in takeoff. The split flap has significant drag at small deflections, whereas the hinge flap does not because airflow remains attached to the flap. The slotted flap has a gap between the wing and the leading edge of the flap. The slot allows high pressure airflow on the wing under surface to energize the lower pressure over the top, thereby delaying flow separation. The slotted flap has greater lift than the hinge flap but less than the split flap, but because of a higher lift-drag ratio, it gives better takeoff and climb performance. Small deflections of the slotted flap give a higher drag than the hinge flap, but less than the split. This allows the slotted flap to be used for takeoff. The Fowler flap deflects down and aft to increase the wing area. This flap can be multi-slotted, making it the most complex of the trailing edge systems. This system does, however, give the maximum lift coefficient. Drag characteristics at small deflections are much like the slotted flap. Because of structural complexity and difficulty in sealing the slots, Fowler flaps are most commonly used on larger airplanes. Operational Procedures It would be impossible to discuss all the many airplane designs and flap combinations. This emphasizes the importance of the FAA-approved Airplane Flight Manual and or Pilot's Operating Handbook, AFM-POH, for a given airplane. However, while some AFM-POHs are specific as to operational use of flaps, many are lacking. Hence, flap operation makes pilot judgment of critical importance. In addition, flap operation is used for landings and takeoffs, during which the airplane is in close proximity to the ground where the margin for error is small. Since the recommendations given in the AFM POH are based on the airplane and the flap design combination, the pilot must relate the manufacturer's recommendation to aerodynamic effects of flaps. This requires that the pilot have a basic background knowledge of flap aerodynamics and geometry. With this information, the pilot must make a decision as to the degree of flap deflection and time of deflection based on runway and approach conditions relative to the wind conditions. The time of flap extension and degree of deflection are related. Large flap deflections at one single point in the landing pattern produce large lift changes that require significant pitch and power changes in order to maintain airspeed and glide slope. Incremental deflection of flaps on downwind, base, and final approach allow smaller adjustment of pitch and power compared to extension of full flaps all at one time. This procedure facilitates a more stabilized approach. A soft or short field landing requires minimal speed at touchdown. The flap deflection that results in minimal ground speed therefore should be used. If obstacle clearance is a factor, the flap deflection that results in the steepest angle of approach should be used. It should be noted, however, that the flap setting that gives the minimal speed at touchdown does not necessarily give the steepest angle of approach. However, maximum flap extension gives the steepest angle of approach and minimum speed at touchdown. Maximum flap extension, particularly beyond 30 to 35 degrees, results in a large amount of drag. This requires higher power settings than used with partial flaps. Because of the steep approach angle combined with power to offset drag, the flare with full flaps becomes critical. The drag produces a high sink rate that must be controlled with power, yet failure to reduce power at a rate so that the power is idle at touchdown allows the airplane to float down the runway. A reduction in power too early results in a hard landing. Crosswind component is another factor to be considered in the degree of flap extension. The deflected flap presents a surface area for the wind to act on. In a crosswind, the flapped wing on the upwind side is more affected than the downwind wing. This is, however, eliminated to a slight extent in the crabbed approach 
since the airplane is more nearly aligned with the wind. When using a wing low approach, however, the lowered wing partially blankets the upwind flap, but the dihedral of the wing combined with the flap and wind make lateral control more difficult. Lateral control becomes more difficult as flap extension reaches maximum and the crosswind becomes perpendicular to the runway. Crosswind effects on the flapped wing become more pronounced as the airplane comes closer to the ground. The wing, flap, and ground form a container that is filled with air by the crosswind. With the wind striking the deflected flap and fuselage side and with the flap located behind the main gear, the upwind wing will tend to rise and the airplane will tend to turn into the wind. Proper control position therefore is essential for maintaining runway alignment. Also, it may be necessary to retract the flaps upon positive ground contact. The go-around is another factor to consider when making a decision about degree of flap deflection and about where in the landing pattern to extend flaps. Because of the nose-down pitching moment produced with flap extension, trim is used to offset this pitching moment. Application of full power in the go-around increases the airflow over the flapped wing. This produces additional lift causing the nose to pitch up. The pitch-up tendency does not diminish completely with flap retraction because of the trim setting. Expedient retraction of flaps is desirable to eliminate drag, thereby allowing rapid increase in airspeed. However, flap retraction also decreases lift so that the airplane sinks rapidly. The degree of flap deflection combined with design configuration of the horizontal tail relative to the wing requires that the pilot carefully monitor pitch and airspeed, carefully control flap retraction to minimize altitude loss, and properly use the rudder for coordination. Considering these factors, the pilot should extend the same degree of deflection at the same point in the landing pattern. This requires that a consistent traffic pattern be used. Therefore, the pilot can have a pre-planned go-around sequence based on the airplane's position in the landing pattern. There is no single formula to determine the degree of flap deflection to be used on landing, because a landing involves variables that are dependent on each other. The AFM POH for the particular airplane will contain the manufacturer's recommendations for some landing situations. On the other hand, AFM POH information on flap usage for takeoff is more precise. The manufacturer's requirements are based on the climb performance produced by a given flap design. Under no circumstances should a flap setting given in the AFM POH be exceeded for takeoff. Controllable Pitch Propeller Fixed pitch propellers are designed for best efficiency at one speed of rotation and forward speed. This type of propeller will provide suitable performance in a narrow range of air speeds. However, efficiency would suffer considerably outside this range. To provide high propeller efficiency through a wide range of operation, the propeller blade angle must be controllable. The most convenient way of controlling the propeller blade angle is by means of a constant speed governing system. Constant Speed Propeller the constant speed propeller keeps the blade angle adjusted for maximum efficiency for most conditions of flight. When an engine is running at constant speed, the torque power, exerted by the engine at the propeller shaft must equal the opposing load provided by the resistance of the air. The RPM is controlled by regulating the torque absorbed by the propeller, in other words, by increasing or decreasing the resistance offered by the air to the propeller. In the case of a fixed pitch propeller, the torque absorbed by the propeller is a function of speed or RPM. If the power output of the engine is changed, the engine will accelerate or decelerate until an RPM is reached at which the power delivered is equal to the power absorbed. In the case of a constant speed propeller, the power absorbed is independent of the RPM. For by varying the pitch of the blades, the air resistance and hence the torque or load can be changed without reference to propeller speed. This is accomplished with a constant speed propeller by means of a governor. The governor, in most cases, is geared to the engine crankshaft and thus is sensitive to changes in engine RPM. 
the pilot controls the engine RPM indirectly by means of a propeller control in the cockpit, which is connected to the governor. For maximum takeoff power, the propeller control is moved all the way forward to the low pitch, high RPM position, and the throttle is moved forward to the maximum allowable manifold pressure position. To reduce power for climb or cruise, manifold pressure is reduced to the desired value with the throttle, and the engine RPM is reduced by moving the propeller control back toward the high pitch, low RPM position until the desired RPM is observed on the tachometer. Pulling back on the propeller control causes the propeller blades to move to a higher angle. Increasing the propeller blade angle of attack results in an increase in the resistance of the air. This puts a load on the engine so it slows down. In other words, the resistance of the air at the higher blade angle is greater than the torque or power delivered to the propeller by the engine, so it slows down to a point where the two forces are in balance. When an airplane is nosed up into a climb from level flight, the engine will tend to slow down. Since the governor is sensitive to small changes in engine RPM, it will decrease the blade angle just enough to keep the engine speed from falling off. If the airplane is nosed down into a dive, the governor will increase the blade angle enough to prevent the engine from overspeeding. This allows the engine to maintain a constant RPM and thus maintain the power output. Changes in airspeed and power can be obtained by changing RPM at a constant manifold pressure, by changing the manifold pressure at a constant RPM, or by changing both RPM and manifold pressure. Thus, the constant speed propeller makes it possible to obtain an infinite number of power settings. Takeoff, Climb, and Cruise during takeoff, when the forward motion of the airplane is at low speeds and when maximum power and thrust are required, the constant speed propeller sets up a low propeller blade angle, pitch. The low blade angle keeps the angle of attack with respect to the relative wind small and efficient at the low speed. See figure 11-3. At the same time, it allows the propeller to slice it thin and handle a smaller mass of air per revolution. This light load allows the engine to turn at maximum RPM and develop maximum power. Although the mass of air per revolution is small, the number of revolutions per minute is high. Thrust is maximum at the beginning of the takeoff and then decreases as the airplane gains speed and the airplane drag increases. Due to the high slipstream velocity during takeoff, the effective lift of the wing behind the propeller is increased. As the airspeed increases after liftoff, the load on the engine is lightened because of the small blade angle. The governor senses this and increases the blade angle slightly. Again, the higher blade angle with the higher speeds keeps the angle of attack with respect to the relative wind small and efficient. For climb after takeoff, the power output of the engine is reduced to climb power by decreasing the manifold pressure and lowering RPM by increasing the blade angle. At the higher climb airspeed and the higher blade angle, the propeller is handling a greater mass of air per second at a lower slipstream velocity. This reduction in power is offset by the increase in propeller efficiency. The angle of attack is again kept small by the increase in the blade angle with an increase in airspeed. At cruising altitude when the airplane is in level flight, less power is required to produce a higher airspeed than is used in climb. Consequently, engine power is again reduced by lowering the manifold pressure and increasing the blade angle to decrease RPM. The higher airspeed and higher blade angle enable the propeller to handle a still greater mass of air per second at still smaller slipstream velocity. At normal cruising speeds, propeller efficiency is at or near maximum efficiency. Due to the increase in blade angle and airspeed, the angle of attack is still small and efficient. Blade Angle Control Once the pilot selects the RPM settings for the propeller, the propeller governor automatically adjusts the blade angle to maintain the selected RPM. It does this by using oil pressure. Generally, the oil pressure used for pitch change comes directly from the engine lubricating system. When a governor is employed, 
Engine oil is used, and the oil pressure is usually boosted by a pump, which is integrated with the governor. The higher pressure provides a quicker blade angle change. The RPM at which the propeller is to operate is adjusted in the governor head. The pilot changes this setting by changing the position of the governor rack through the cockpit propeller control. On some constant speed propellers, changes in pitch are obtained by the use of an inherent centrifugal twisting moment of the blades that tends to flatten the blades toward low pitch, and oil pressure applied to a hydraulic piston connected to the propeller blades which moves them toward high pitch. Another type of constant speed propeller uses counterweights attached to the blade shanks in the hub. Governor oil pressure and the blade twisting moment move the blades toward the low pitch position, and centrifugal force acting on the counterweights moves them, and the blades, toward the high pitch position. In the first case above, governor oil pressure moves the blades towards high pitch, and in the second case, governor oil pressure and the blade twisting moment move the blades toward low pitch. A loss of governor oil pressure, therefore, will affect each differently. Governing range. The blade angle range for constant speed propellers varies from about 11.5 to 40 degrees. The higher the speed of the airplane, the greater the blade angle range. See figure 11-4. The range of possible blade angles is termed the propeller's governing range. The governing range is defined by the limits of the propeller blade's travel between high and low blade angle pitch stops. As long as the propeller blade angle is within the governing range and not against either pitch stop, a constant engine RPM will be maintained. However, once the propeller blade reaches its pitch stop limit, the engine RPM will increase or decrease with changes in airspeed and propeller load similar to a fixed pitch propeller. For example, once a specific RPM is selected, if the airspeed decreases enough, the propeller blades will reduce pitch in an attempt to maintain the selected RPM until they contact their low pitch stops. From that point, any further reduction in airspeed will cause the engine RPM to decrease. Conversely, if the airspeed increases, the propeller blade angle will increase until the high pitch stop is reached. The engine RPM will then begin to increase. Constant speed propeller operation. The engine is started with the propeller control in the low pitch, high RPM position. This position reduces the load or drag of the propeller, and the result is easier starting and warm up of the engine. During warm up, the propeller blade changing mechanism should be operated slowly and smoothly through a full cycle. This is done by moving the propeller control with the manifold pressure set to produce about 1,600 RPM to the high pitch, low RPM position, allowing the RPM to stabilize and then moving the propeller control back to the low pitch takeoff position. This should be done for two reasons, to determine whether the system is operating correctly and to circulate fresh warm oil through the propeller governor system. It should be remembered that the oil has been trapped in the propeller cylinder since the last time the engine was shut down. There is a certain amount of leakage from the propeller cylinder and the oil tends to congeal, especially if the outside air temperature is low. Consequently, if the propeller isn't exercised before takeoff, there is a possibility that the engine may overspeed on takeoff. An airplane equipped with a constant speed propeller has better takeoff performance than a similarly powered airplane equipped with a fixed pitch propeller. This is because with a constant speed propeller, an airplane can develop its maximum rated horsepower, redline on the tachometer, while motionless. An airplane with a fixed pitch propeller, on the other hand, must accelerate down the runway to increase airspeed and aerodynamically unload the propeller so that RPM and horsepower can steadily build up to their maximum. With a constant speed propeller, the tachometer reading should come up to within 40 RPM of the red line as soon as full power is applied and should remain there for the entire takeoff. Excessive manifold pressure raises the cylinder compression pressure, resulting in high stresses within the engine. Excessive pressure also produces high engine temperatures. A combination of high manifold pressure and low RPM can induce damaging detonation. 
In order to avoid these situations, the following sequence should be followed when making power changes. When increasing power, increase the RPM first and then the manifold pressure. When decreasing power, decrease the manifold pressure first and then decrease the RPM. It is a fallacy that, in non-turbocharged engines, the manifold pressure in inches of mercury, inches Hg, should never exceed RPM in hundreds for cruise power settings. The cruise power charts in the AFM POH should be consulted when selecting cruise power settings. Whatever the combinations of RPM and manifold pressure listed in these charts, they have been flight tested and approved by the airframe and power plant engineers for the respective airframe and engine manufacturer. Therefore, if there are power settings such as 2100 RPM and 24 inches manifold pressure in the power chart, they are approved for use. With a constant speed propeller, a powered descent can be made without overspeeding the engine. The system compensates for the increased airspeed of the descent by increasing the propeller blade angles. If the descent is too rapid or is being made from a high altitude, the maximum blade angle limit of the blades is not sufficient to hold the RPM constant. When this occurs, the RPM is responsive to any change in throttle setting. Some pilots consider it advisable to set the propeller control for maximum RPM during the approach to have full horsepower available in case of emergency. If the governor is set for this higher RPM early in the approach, when the blades have not yet reached their minimum angle stops, the RPM may increase to unsafe limits. However, if the propeller control is not readjusted for the takeoff RPM until the approach is almost completed, the blades will be against or very near the minimum angle stops, and there will be little, if any, change in RPM. In case of emergency, both throttle and propeller controls should be moved to takeoff positions. Many pilots prefer to feel the airplane respond immediately when they give short bursts of the throttle during approach. By making the approach under a little power and having the propeller control set at or near cruising RPM, this result can be obtained. Although the governor responds quickly to any change in throttle setting, a sudden and large increase in throttle setting will cause a momentary overspeeding of the engine until the blades become adjusted to absorb the increased power. If an emergency demanding full power should arise during approach, the sudden advancing of the throttle will cause momentary overspeeding of the engine beyond the RPM for which the governor is adjusted. This temporary increase in engine speed acts as an emergency power reserve. Some important points to remember concerning constant speed propeller operations are The red line on the tachometer not only indicates maximum allowable RPM, it also indicates the RPM required to obtain the engine's rated horsepower. A momentary propeller overspeed may occur when the throttle is advanced rapidly for takeoff. This is usually not serious if the rated RPM is not exceeded by 10% for more than 3 seconds. The green arc on the tachometer indicates the normal operating range. When developing power in this range, the engine drives the propeller. Below the green arc, however, it is usually the windmilling propeller that powers the engine. Prolonged operation below the green arc can be detrimental to the engine. On takeoffs from low elevation airports, the manifold pressure in inches of mercury may exceed the RPM. This is normal in most cases. The pilot should consult the AFM POH for limitations. All power changes should be made smoothly and slowly to avoid overboosting and or overspeeding. End of chapter 11, part 1.